people shouldn't have to suffer through a bad habit or a bad situation. There should be these things that we can wear that can help us gain insight into our problem and perhaps insight into a whole disease category. With wearable technology, we're going to get so much data about what people's lives really look like, what they're really doing, whether they're really taking their medications or really doing their physical therapy. And there's going to be a totally new relationship, I think, between doctor and patient when that happens. There's very specific needs that people are going to have that wearables can solve that's different than the kind of the general purpose kind of problems that a phone can solve. For instance, if I have back pain, there's wearables that are very specific to addressing that problem. Wearables can remind you that you've been sitting for too long. They can let you know that your posture is bad. They can let you know that you fulfilled your 20 minutes of exercise that you had to do. I had played eight years in the NFL. It's a sport that is built on an unbelievably high amount of toughness. And I endured seven diagnosed concussions. I remember thinking to myself, it's probably not good to get hit in the head repeatedly. You have these people that say there's a problem, there's a problem, there's a problem. All right, yeah, there is a problem. What are you gonna do about it? The check light measures force of impact to the head, and it does it in a way that has an actionable data points on the back end, which we have LED lights that bend the impact into a moderate impact and severe impact. Well, it's not gonna say you've had a concussion, but what it has said is there is a measure of impact that is significant, you may want to get checked out. If you really think about who could really benefit the most is you look at youth sports and high school sports where there's not a lot of resources around. Coaching my kids has been such an absolute joy for me. I want to be able to help them enjoy the sport, but play smarter, play safer and there's ways to do that. I want to develop technology to bring, bring that and make it ubiquitous throughout and give you data where you've never had data before. In wearables, what we're going to see is this sort of coming together of people's digital world and their physical presence. So you want to find out what's the data that is going to make sense to people. For some people, it might just be the total steps at the end of their day. And then they might want to ask a different question. They want to say, well, what days am I most active? Being allowed to interact with your data and visualize it is very powerful. When somebody comes into my office, I get this one minute look at what their life is like. I get their vital signs, I get a certain gestalt of what they're, what's going on with them, whether they're doing well, whether they're doing poorly, but I don't know what the other 99% of their life looks like, and that's the most important determinant of health. Patients are gonna own this data, they're gonna control it, and then it's gonna be delivered to the medical community in a way that doctors can actually use to help people live healthier lives. And for me, the perfect wearable is going to take all of my data and use it to make real recommendations for what I should be doing in my daily life to optimize. The population I'm most interested in is individuals with autism spectrum disorder. So we're seeing uh, children now getting diagnosed at a rate of one in 88. I think that there's a more informative way to do research than just being in a laboratory. So for instance, uh, a child who is rocking a lot, but all I know is that they're either rocking or not rocking. What I'd like to be able to do is not tell them, don't rock, it looks weird, or restrain them. What I want to do is understand about things in the external and internal environment that might be mediating why someone is engaging in this behavior that can help me better understand what function it serves. So I'm wearing a sensor on my wrist that records temperature, movement, and it records sympathetic nervous system arousal. And what it's doing is streaming live in real time to Bluetooth receiver on this computer here. With a model like that, I can compare it to that same kid over time as they develop or they receive intervention to say that there's a basis for their change. The more people are actively engaged in their own health care and sort of work as a group together to solve a problem, each of us could be a researcher. Everyone can say, this is my question, and this is my data, and this is how I'm exploring, and then they can share that. We're going to see a lot more people using wearables, and we're going to see a huge upswelling of awareness of health and wellness, which is already happening in a really cool way, but it's just going to get bigger.